We are so back. Look, my fans used to send me a lot of Minecraft escape rooms, which is so sweet. So one day I decided to make fun of all their hard work in front of millions of people on the internet. And yeah, I felt really bad for cyberbullying my audience. Until you guys sent me over 300 more! From massive towers to tight spaces, smart ones, dumb ones, really dumb ones, I have literally had to discover multiple new glitches and fire every neuron in my brain at once just to comprehend these. This was the most mechanically absurd video of my life. But the question remains, did any of you learn from my last debunk video? Did you finally make escape rooms that I couldn't make fun of? Well, you'll be surprised to find out that no, not really. So it's time for round two. All right, what is this? You've locked me in a room with nothing but a floating block of ice and a blank sign? At least I thought it was blank, until I realized 1.20 signs looked the same on both sides, so it's probably just facing away. Which gave me an idea. I used F5 to see if I could read the other side of the mysterious sign, which said, but then I had a very good idea. I oh, so that's useless. Well, I may as well take its advice. I started searching for anything behind the walls using the F5 glitch. I, I noticed the walls were about two blocks thick. There was another room nearby me with a lime shulker box and Oh no, a boat glitched into the wall. Oh, these maps are gonna be worse than I thought. I assume you made the walls two blocks thick to stop me from glitching through them with the boat, but I still can. Don't worry, Sipover made the same mistake. See, in my Kamen debunk video, I accidentally discovered how to glitch through walls by entering a boat with the help of water. But soon after I did, a smarter player named Doctor Who Kobe discovered how to do the same thing without needing water. It's a lot of aggressively ramming yourself into a wall, but basically, the instant before you hit the wall with your boat, you exit it, and somehow its momentum clips the boat into the wall just enough that you can push the rest of the way. But unlike the old boat glitch, which only works by placing it down, with this new glitch, nothing is stopping you from just ramming into the second layer of bedrock as well. And thus, if rule one was to not give ender pearls in a room with one block thick walls, rule two is not to put boats in a room with two block thick walls. Just wait until you learn rule three. Anyway, I rank every escape room that used a boat, eight out of 10, which of course stands for boat. But now it's time for the first real puzzle. This map is ranked as one of the hardest in the entire database, and yet it only has four rooms. That's right, other people have played it and it took them several hours. I'll just say this now, if it takes me more than an hour to escape, I refuse to put this in the video. Anyway, I'm not gonna waste time listing my items, cause you can already see them. I do have access to a crafting table and a clear window into the next room, and it looked like this hopper contraption here could send an item to me if only I could update this water that's blocked by barriers. Well, I guess that's what the Frostwalker boots are for. So I put them on without thinking, froze the water, and all I got given was another red wool. Well hey, that's not too bad, it was starting to look like we were gonna make a bed. And yeah, my suspicions were confirmed when I spawned the villager and saw a trade from a button to wool. This was looking really easy, but here's the problem. Wait a minute, I'm softlocked. Okay, I thought we were making a bed so I could sleep and get through the window into the next room, right? Well, unfortunately, the laws of orbital mechanics do not apply. The sun has frozen in place. I can't sleep if it's not night. And that's when I realized how stupid I actually was. What I had to do was dispense the Frostwalker boots onto the villager and have it freeze the ice for me. Then I'd set my spawn on the other side and die to the campfire. But now I can't do that since I put the boots on myself and Frostwalker makes you immune to campfires. And of course, they have Curse of Binding. You actually outsmarted me on the second escape route, but I can outsmart you back. Even though I can no longer die and respawn to get into the next room, I can still get through the window with the help of this bed. You know how you can't place blocks if there's an entity in the way? Well, beds do not care. Only the back half of a bed checks if someone's in the way. So if your friends are AFK, you can force them into crawl mode with the head of a bed. And believe it or not, you can do this to yourself. See how if you're facing, say, east, then the bed gets placed from west to east. Well, if you swish your head to face west, in less than a tick, you can still get it to place west to east and hit you in the head. So after increasing my mouse sensitivity and practicing for a bit, I was ready to test it by trying to steal the crafting table in the wall. I had to jump, travel forward while rotating my head to click exactly the right spot, but it worked. Then I took the crafting table to the main window so I could execute the trick again without having to jump this time, and not only had I escaped a soft lock, but I had a block to spare. I love this bed so much, I'm gonna cheese so many puzzles with it. So room two gave me an armor trim, netherite, a trident, a stick, and another villager. The villager could give me a riptide book. This isn't a very subtle puzzle, is it? There's clearly enough here to craft a netherite hoe, which gives you enough experience to let you make a riptide trident and launch out into room three. And how expensive could it be? <gasps> no, give up my prized bed for a trident? Never! Actually, I tried literally everything else, so it took me hours, there's no other way out. So I gave up the bed, made a netherite hoe for the achievement experience, and forged a riptide trident so I could catapult into room three, only to find that the dropper in room three had a boat. Okay, whoever made this has not been paying attention. But yeah, once again, eight out of 10, which of course stands for bed. Now I'll be honest, I'm kind of nervous for what's coming up. Listen, Dr. Hukobi, you know, the mad scientist who discovered this boat glitch, he made an escape room. I'm just kidding, I lied. He actually made seven and they're all based around phasing through blocks. Not by using boats, no, by using a completely different phasing glitch. And he challenged me to beat all seven of those escape rooms in this video, just to give you an idea of what this glitch is like. One of the puzzles is to somehow get out of a fully sealed two by two room 
with no windows with the following items. Ready? Two oak stairs. See why I'm nervous now? Since I'm definitely not ready, I'll say that once I've debunked seven other escape rooms in this video, I'll take on his challenge and complete the disconnect glitch gauntlet. So far, we've done two, so let's get to work. Starting off with this weirdly shaped room where I'm stuck in a small cavity. I'm standing on a grass block, but otherwise, I don't really see anything around me, so I, I guess I'll just break it? Oh no. Hey God, let me just check the replay file. Oh, oh no, look, apparently there's this room above me with signs that's meant to mock me if I try pearl glitching. Ah, oh, they know my tricks. They outsmarted me. They finally stopped me from pearl glitching out. But only on one side. I'll rank that three for Ender Pearl. Next. Okay, I'm told this next escape room is very hard to understand. So let's turn on our brains for this one. Focus. At the end of this hallway is a chest, and inside it, is Planks, Coal, Glass, Gold, String, and Vilgun, Powder, Shell, and Prismarine, Bricks, Piercing, Three Book, Rod Eye, Footstone, Membrane, Glowstone, Fishwort, Arrow, Shulker, Spawn Egg, Do You Ever Feel Like a Plastic Bag? What? Well, anyway, I immediately started mapping out every combination of these items' interactions with each other, looking through the timelines of every crafting recipe, smelting recipe, potion, stone cutting recipe to figure out how every item came together, and I figured it out. First, you make a crafting table. Then, you make a boat. Boat out of map? Boat out of 10. All right, enough with these broken maps. It's time to play something competent. This is probably my favorite map today because it managed to teach me something very new. So remember when I got one of my old videos debunked? I thought it was impossible to break blocks that a piston was moving. This looks so simple, but it's literally unbreakable. Turns out it was possible using a very obscure technique called moving your mouse by one centimeter. So this entire escape room is based on my biggest mistake. Every level is breaking through sliding doors that are better designed than the one I made. Just as a reminder, when you're mining a block that's sliding between spaces, you start to break the block behind it for a split second, which resets your mining progress over and over. So to break through a door like this, I'll have to mine the top block since that's the only block where there's an empty space on the other side of it, meaning there's nothing there to reset me. Side note, to this day I still see people uploading that old inescapable sliding honeycomb trap and pretend like they just invented it, and every time I see it I just, mm, mm hmm ah yes, inescapable. Anyway, with this knowledge, level one is already solved. What, you think this little lower block is stopping me? Look, you know how we need water to survive, right? Well these guys need redstone. Remember kids, it's only homicide if you kill a member of your own species, and I'm not a dork. Ah! Level two, my inventory resets, but I get a rail, a piston, a pressure plate, and of course the barrel. This time the door has blocks directly on the other side, so I can't just mine through it like before. This is really not a lot of stuff to work with. Okay, you might be thinking I could push through the door with the piston, which would probably work in the real world, but in Minecraft, the piston faces towards you when you place it. Since we need the piston to face the door, I'd practically have to be standing inside the door when I put it down. That is, unless I have a second pushable block, and I do. Piston Pistons can push rails, so I tried it just to see what would happen, and it did this. Uh, the pistons didn't stop, but now I can do some chicanery. Do you remember when I said I'd have to be standing inside the door to place the piston correctly? That was a lie. I have to be crawling. So I pushed myself into crawl mode, snuck inside the door, took a moment to appreciate the situation, just about managed to recollect all my items, activate the pressure plate with my barrel, and then place the piston one more time, obstructing the door. Hopefully the next level gives me more items to work with. Level 3 was absolutely covered in paintings, and behind every painting, oh. Uh... Every painting has a container brimming with random items, and my goal was to find any combination of these items that could get through this door that once again has blocks behind it. I'm proud to say though, I actually solved this one pretty quickly, and the answer was homicide. You just flick a lever in this cavity and it powers the redstone clock, which stops everything. That kind of breaks my water equals redstone analogy. Anyway, moving on to level four, the hardest level. Now the door is up on a ledge, and I'm provided a daylight detector, a crossbow, and a leaping arrow. Uh, how is this possible? Interesting thing about the crossbow is that it has multi-shot, so I could give myself jump boost and still keep the arrow, which I was able to figure out. Step one, shoot a breakable block. Step two, break it, and then the arrow falls onto you. Now that I have the jump boost, the daylight detector is enough to help me get all the way up to the ledge, and all that is just to reach the door. So how do I get through a moving door with a crossbow? Mm, well, obviously it's not gonna be that hard. I completely gave up after two hours of trying. Yeah, I was still curious what the answer was, so I decided to look for the original download to see if anyone had played it and also got stuck here. And guess what I found? Doctor Who Kobe was once stuck on the same level as me and asked for help on the same section. You and I are not so different, Kobe. Actually, I had to ask him to send me a video of the solution, and don't act like you would have solved this, okay? You have to hold both clicks at the same time, because when you let go of right click, you obviously start mining, but when you hold it back down, your mining progress pauses because you start to draw back the crossbow. Let me explain this with a slower example. The solution is to take advantage of these pauses when you're pulling the crossbow, and only let go of click whenever the block isn't moving. The moment it moves, you have to be drawing the crossbow so that it doesn't reset. This is a lot harder with the faster blocks, but by some miracle or another, it's possible. From here, I just broke the other back block so I didn't have to do the glitch a second time, but wow. That was simply a really cool puzzle. And I get one final level as a treat. A stack of TNT and observers. Well, that's easy. That can destroy any door unless it's made of nether- 
Okay, this is meant to be the hardest level, but I actually solved it three years ago. Kinda. Way back when I was trying to debunk the idea of an inescapable prison, I reminded people how any block can be blown up while it's moving, no matter how powerful it is. If bedrock could move, you could blow it up. The only hard part is the timing. The door slides only every 12 seconds. I know TNT is on a fuse of 4 seconds, and it takes about half a second for one TNT to start lighting many others, so I placed the TNT, listened for the movement, and waited 7.25 seconds before lighting it, and... I got it first try. Funny thing is that actually blew up the button I needed to get out of the level, but it ended up turning into a kind of accidental bonus puzzle. Well, you can't lie, that was a lovely escape room. Wait, wait a minute. If these command blocks here teleport you to each of the levels, then what are those command blocks? Oh shoot, there's a top secret final level. It doesn't even give you any items. It's just moving glass with glass behind it. Somehow this was possible to break through with nothing in your inventory, and neither Doctor Who Kobe nor I could figure it out. So I had to ask the map creator a couple questions. First, what's the solution? And second, to discover this, did you inject or snore? The solution requires you to become a master of block breaking mechanics. Yes, the mechanic that is so simple, it is literally the first four letters of the game. This is a combination of two block breaking glitches that I already knew. One is a glitch where if you hold your mining button down, you can alternate between aiming at and aiming away from a block and your mining progress won't reset. You can try it yourself, just make sure not to aim your crosshair at another block or it will obviously reset. Now this glitch alone would be enough to break through the door if there was an empty space off to the side of it. Obviously I would only move down to damage whenever it's not moving and just before the block slides I would look away. Unfortunately this air gap here was just added for demonstration and doesn't actually exist. In the real map, if I try moving my crosshair away from the door in any direction, direction, I hit the bedrock which resets my progress, bringing me to glitch number two, the hotkey F3 plus T which just resets your textures but can be abused to continue mining things even if you let go of your mouse. People normally use this glitch to go AFK while mining something, but the fun part is that during the moment the Mojang logo pops on screen, you can move your head without interacting with anything. Remember that whole problem of your crosshair hitting the bedrock to the side? Well, if you sit on the F3 plus T screen while turning your head, you can face this tiny hallway off to the side, then F3 plus T again to go back, breaking the door whenever it's not moving and looking at the hallway whenever it does, a tenth of a second at a time. I spent so long trying to do this that I had to go to the roof of the prison and engineer an entirely new setup that was slower that used planks, so I could practice while still being able to watch my progress. When I mastered that, I moved on to dirt blocks that were going slightly faster. And there are so many slight key presses you have to get right, but I got it. All that was left was to do the real thing, and failure after failure, I couldn't even see if I was making progress, but as far as I knew, if I got it, I would be one of the first people to ever pull it off. And after 35 minutes, this this was my live reaction. What? No! That's possible! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Dude, I need a break. I'm, you know, I'm gonna finish the rest of this video later. Yeah, that one's getting a zero out of 10. Ken, what do you mean? These puzzles were so cleverly crafted. How could you give it a zero? Oh, don't you see? It was so good I couldn't debunk a single part of it. So it doesn't count. It was useless to me. Oh, and the, the zero stands for obviously the best one. By the way, seriously, if you want to play any of the escape rooms in this video, you can find all of them in the link in the description. Except for one, because one map was sent to me in top secret. I'm serious. This one guy sent a private video from person to person until it reached one of my Discord admins who sent it to me. The video described a 25 Five level escape room that the creator spent months building. Nah, I'm just kidding, it didn't take that long. He spent months just patching its weaknesses. To play it, within 24 hours, I had to friend an account to gain access to extra instructions and the world file, and finally I could play this mysterious escape room I supposedly couldn't debunk. It started very simple, there was a hidden string puzzle where you make a wall block, pearl glitching through the ceiling with ladders, I saved as many ladders as I could of course, but I pretty quickly found out the gimmick. Every room has this pressure plate at the end of it that clears your inventory of certain items. Seriously, every level, I would make an effort to spare a couple items to cheese later puzzles and then lose them. I tried throwing items over it, the items get killed. I tried breaking the pressure plate, it politely declined. And I couldn't place any spare blocks on the other side because the halls were filled with invisible block 36 to stop me. This was getting slightly frustrating until level 7, when it got really frustrating. The chest in this room contains a mushroom, two dirt, and four bone meal. You'd think I'd have to grow a mushroom to progress in this room, but uh, I, uh... Okay, as tempting as it is to just leave, there's clearly this end portal frame in the wall inviting me to do something. There was nothing visible inside it nothing in the lava, and nothing on this ledge. But F5 told a different story. There was a chest behind the wall, and I may be able to access it. Of course, I thought. I need to grab the hidden item in there before I move on, and giant mushrooms can destroy portal blocks. This should be the best place to grow it. Of course, I only have four bone meals, so let's cross our fingers. Uh, 
Thank you, RNG. Well, this is a soft lock. I think a normal person here would probably give up. But I'm neither normal nor a person. I'm a door. So I carried on. Somehow, every room was still solvable so far. There was always enough items to move on. I was clearly supposed to be saving some of the items for future puzzles. But as long as I could keep going, I did. The puzzles felt like zombies. I wasn't solving anything, really. Just traveling through bedrock rooms with the wrong set of items. That was until I had a very good idea that I should have had a long time ago. Hold up, is there anything stopping me from just putting my items in a chest? I, I feel like I could probably still reach it from the other side of the inventory clear, right? Oh, no, that, that works. Oh my gosh, why didn't I figure that out before? Now I had a way to bypass that stupid item gate. Oh, and good thing I discovered that before the next room, because this upcoming room has a boat, and I want it. How do I get past this? I'm willing to bet I can survive if I jump in the lava and enter the boat in time, and there is saturation in this room, so I'll fully reset my health. Okay, nope, not if I forget to jump. Okay, like this. Perfect! Mm, this is fine. Okay, now this upcoming part looks like it's going to be boat parkour in the lava. However, I think one boat is more valuable than one block, so I'm gonna take the easy route across the side. It would be a lot easier if the rules didn't prohibit disconnect glitching. Fortunately though, I did end up making it onto the block. Actually, I died, but I re-recorded it until it worked, and then I made it to the end and used my new chest exploit to preserve the boat just in case it would have cleared. Now I was more powerful than ever and just in time too. This was the room it was all leading up to. Whatever was behind that portal frame was supposed to be used in here, and you know how I can tell? Observe. I have enough iron nuggets in this room to make shears. I have two snow blocks and a shovel. Everything one would need to collect snow from a snow golem, except for its head. Normally, this would be the end, but not for me. With the power of the boat, I can ascend five blocks up at a time, making up for all the blocks I would have lost. The odds were back in my favor. What is this room? Three sticks? TNT? Ice? More like boat, boat, boat! And if you thought the boat was nice... Oh, gravel and a third iron ingot? Rule three of escape rooms. If I have access to a crafting table and water, do not give me three iron ingots. Now, I had the most powerful item in escape rooms. Heights, lava, it doesn't matter. Nice damage boost jump you got there. It's too bad I don't care. I was on top of the world until... No way this is a barrier maze. Honestly, I was really disappointed until I learned a surprisingly rare use for water. I can use it to solve the maze for me. It shows me dead ends before I ever get to them. This makes it so much easier to visualize. I can already confirm all the paths here are dead ends, and I don't have to worry that I barely missed something. It's such an intuitive use of water, it's probably why they added it to the game. The next major obstacle was a hidden tunnel under a solid chunk of lava, which again is no match for the bucket. But then, I found the one thing water cannot get past. A fully sealed bedrock door with no window. Did somebody say boat glitch? And that was about it. It was a ridiculous escape room, but probably the most fun I've ever had cheesing one. Despite all the obnoxious tropes and overused puzzles, for the experience, I'd have to give it a 10 out of 10. The 10 stands for, I only have to escape one room in this next map. Oh good, finally, we get a break from the long puzzles. All right, what do I have to work with? A piston, a torch, and a pressure plate. When I mined the piston, I noticed there was a netherite block lodged in the floor, which I immediately ignored and used the piston to get out of the cage, only to find that the exit is actually right next to me. But I'm only one block short from getting up to it. Wait, you don't think I need the nev- uh, yeah, I might have softlocked. Actually, I might have not. Okay, of course I can't get in crawl mode the exact same way I did a second ago, but hear me out, I might be able to hit myself into crawl mode in midair. So as long as I time my jump with when I throw this torch, like, not like that. Yes, no, why would you fall? You were this close. There we go. Now, how do I get you out? I need the sticky piston here, but facing down. I have a kind of funny idea. Okay, put the torch here and then face it at this angle. Yep, and then power up from the top. Perfect. Then we can push it into the corner. Then we can push it up and pull it out of the room. Nice. At this point, I'd basically solved the escape room. I just needed the netherite block here, and I could escape. Just kidding, the exit is fake. What? Oh, it's up there. Wait, I still need to get up three blocks. There's no other blocks in the room. I know I can't bring the piston. You can, in fact, bring the piston. It took a while to figure out, though. Basically, what I'm going to do is keep the netherite block hovering at this height, then jump back in the window. Then, I'd do a crawl head hit jump to get onto the netherite block. From here, I'll place the torch and the piston to make this jump a quad. And then all I have to do is count on a 1 in 15 RNG to give me this piston when I mine it. Yes! The gods have blessed me! Uh, oh, oh, wait, I need to bring the torch to power it, right? Eventually, I did make it up. By cheating, I powered the piston one more time to get out and escape. One out of ten. The one stands for, I lied to you, the fake exit wasn't part of the original map. I added it myself just to flex that I could bring the piston out. I'm gonna count that as a debunk, which means there's only one map left to play before Kobe's Gauntlet. Well, this room is rather big for a room that contains nothing except for a composter. Uh, oh, oh wait, there's other things in the room. Okay, there's a dispenser in the ceiling and an observer. Now, I'm willing to believe the observer activates the dispenser, but what if I just... 
Oh boy, this was not the correct item to give me. Wait a minute, guys, you're not gonna believe this. The room actually has three block thick walls. Well, good for you, I guess. But if I'm being honest, I don't know how to actually get out of this room. See, the opening's up here, but no matter what I do, I don't think there's any angle where I can actually place the boat on the ledge. I feel like I'm missing something obvious. What do I do? Is there something behind the observer? Didn't think so. What about the dispenser? <gasps> I don't, I, I don't think I'm supposed to have this, but I, I know one thing you can do with redstone. I can go up to the ledge, place the redstone against the wall, and then place the boat against the side of the dust. That is amazing. This would be such a cool solution if it was intended, but I really don't think it was. If you have any idea what I was supposed to do, please comment it. I'd love to know. Now look, I'm just going to summarize what happened after. There were a few puzzles that looked like they were already solved. I, I have no idea, but the final room had a lava pool, four string, and everyone's favorite, real bedrock, not clickbait. Behind the wall were a couple chests containing five logs, two wool, and another boat. I'm getting a really strong impression they want me to do this squilly glitch. Why else would I have three wool? So I checked my replay recording just to see where to go, and what I found was very disappointing. There are some lava pits and air pockets trying to stop me from squilly glitching, but I can just use a slab to bypass the two block gaps, a trick I have shown in previous videos. I can also go back to either of the previous rooms to squilly glitch from there. I could glitch the boat all the way down this one block hall and completely skip the air gaps, and then I realized the walls in the final room are only one block thick. You know, seven out of ten. Now, because it was that good, seven as in seven maps have been debunked, meaning it's time for the Doctor Who Kobe Gauntlet. Now, as I said before, the thing that makes Kobe's gauntlet so hard is that the majority of puzzles are based on one glitch, the clip disconnect exploit. We've already mastered the element of breaking mechanics, now we must become a master of the player's hitbox and take full advantage of its weaknesses. To make sure everyone's on the same page, listen carefully. If the top half of a player's hitbox becomes occupied by any other block, even by a sliver, they immediately crawl. This we already know, but if the bottom half of a player's hitbox is clipped into any block, even the tiniest amount, like a trapdoor, your hitbox state becomes locked. You can't cannot change between standing, crouching, and crawling no matter what you do. But every lock has a key. One key is just to get out of the clipped block, obviously, then you'd be able to crouch again, but the other key is disconnecting. Logging off while clipped will always reset you back to the standing position. This is because Minecraft knows something is wrong, but is too stupid to fix it, so it makes everything worse. Which should really be a splash text. So it's time to take advantage of Minecraft's weaknesses. Take this example where I need to get into that tunnel with two stairs. Regular crawl glitches won't work here since the tunnel is on the top half. Instead, we do this. You can barely crouch onto the top of a step with no space above your head. And if I mind this step here, I'll be clipped in a block in crouch mode. Remember, if I log off clipped, I'll always log back on standing. And since there's no space to stand, my head will phase through the bedrock like so. Hitboxes only interact with surfaces, so the ceiling block may as well not exist, meaning I can jump. Now the bottom half of my hitbox is no longer clipped, but the top half is, which we all know is a recipe for crawl glitch. And that is just the beginning. This glitch can do way better. This time I'm going to crouch and clip into some bamboo, which means when I log off and back on and jump, I'm still clipped into the bamboo bamboo and I'm not gonna crawl this time so I can just climb the bamboo up through the ceiling and that is what most of these glitches are. How do I use this random set of items to clip from one thing into another? Level by level I was starting to master the hitbox. I could really feel it becoming more intuitive after each room. I understood it well enough that I wasn't just guessing. I could engineer a setup and predict exactly what would happen to me when I logged back on. I'd love to explain every solution but I think this is the kind of map that's better to play than to watch. If you want to get really familiar with disconnect glitching I recommend practicing on these maps. But before I was ready the last map was here. Split into four puzzles, I was told they were some of the hardest, so I had Kobe watching in a Discord call as I solved them, just in case. It starts with a staircase and a door. I already know the first step. Crouch on the stair, clip into the door, disconnect to clip into the ceiling, and now I can crawl. The hard part is going down a block. Fortunately, the solution is actually in my crawl glitch video. Clip into the door, open and close it really fast to phase down a block. Puzzle two made me sacrifice my door and gave me sand instead. It's the same idea as before. Clip into the sand while crouching in the stair, log off, clip into the ceiling, jump into crawl. You get the pattern, but how was I going to get down? down a block this time. I don't have my door anymore, but maybe I never needed it. Stairs are really funny the way they work. They create a 1.5 block gap, which is the exact size of a crouching player. So if I go under a staircase, I'll stay crawling until the moment I hit the floor. However, if I can manage to move under the lower step before that happens, I will stay crawling the entire time. Now, once I pulled this off, Dr. Hukobi actually warned me that I technically cheesed the puzzle. I didn't like gain any items or anything. I just didn't find the intended solution. And yes, this matters because in a lot of maps like this, puzzle designers will organize the levels to teach you certain tricks before the main puzzle. It's normal game design, but since I did my little stair trick, I didn't learn what I needed to for the main room, which is a problem that I decided to immediately ignore and move on. All I got in room three was a slab, and I'm expected to phase through these barriers. I started by doing all the steps in the previous rooms to see if that would give me some inspiration, and it took a while, but I figured it out. From this position, I start by dropping sand into the very edge of my hitbox to lock it, and once I place
place a slab above me, I can jump and I'll stay crawling in the sand the entire time. This is fun on its own, but to continue, I can place a staircase here, bringing me up half a block. So when I log on, I'm actually clipped through everything, including the ceiling, and I can climb out. Thus, we enter the final puzzle. Once again, Kobe warned me that I missed the trick I needed to know, and I won't be able to solve the final room without it. It's just two staircases, the same set of items as his very first puzzle. But this time, I have to escape a fully sealed room with just these stairs. It's the exact same puzzle I told you about forever ago. And believe me when I say this, I'm not exaggerating for the narrative or engagement, but I solved this room in 10 minutes. The first step was really simple. It's an exact replica of the first chamber. The second step is the real challenge. I know I need to clip again, but I can't clip on this layer, and the other layer is too low to do anything. I need to be at least a tiny bit off the ground when I disconnect, so I actually end up in the ceiling, and that's when it clicked. Look at this. It's like we saw earlier. In a 1.5 block gap, you stay crawling until you hit the ground. This is a 1.5 block gap. I just have to clip myself the same way I did in the first level, but instead of crouching, I'm crawling. This would require perfect precision, but it had to be possible. I spent several minutes trying. Sometimes I would accidentally break both stairs, or neither, or whatever. But pretty soon, I did this. <gasps> Kobe, I did it. From here, all I have to do is fill in the air gap between me and the ceiling so when I log back on, I can climb through the staircase to freedom. I'm giving that a 60 out of 10. 10 points for each of his escape rooms, except this one specifically, which gets a zero. And of course, the 60 stands for good night. <laughs>